seriously doing this again? I just love that. I feel I like just, this is a thing now. It's like, you know, <laughs> megaphone, mo- or like, welcome to the movies. Welcome to the big show. <laughs> Live from the studios of EcoVet Studio here in <laughs> beautiful Northwest Arkansas. Part of Bentonville Studios at the farm. Yes. We are back for another episode of Beyond the Tap. Yeah. Uh, Between Two Beers is yeah. our new show. I like I'm that. I like that. It's a good segment uh, where we'll just sit around and throw blame at the worst beers ever. <laughs> what do you think? That actually probably could get a lot of ratings. Yeah. So, yeah. You know what? It, we can do whatever we want. So, whatever. Yeah. Our producer's looking at us like, no, you can't. <laughs> and there's one rule. Now, so we are in the EcoVet studios. And Happy uh, to be also, here. we have our, our wonderful sponsors, uh, Growlers Uptown Kitchen and Tap House here. Yum, yum. So, uh, we, uh, yeah, we're very thankful for them. And of course, Always. our shelf sponsors. And uh, of course, each and every single one of you that are listening right now, because uh, Bongo, we are getting really close as of recording this. By the yeah. time you're hearing this, we've probably passed 100 subscribers on YouTube, which is awesome. That is awesome. Um, we're at 98 as the moment s- sits right now. Okay. So that's pretty fun. That is fun. And, uh, yeah, our social media continues to grow. Yeah. I love it. We've passed 10,000 followers or <laughs> likes on uh, Facebook now. Wow. Um, you uh, do it. Oh, that's cool. 100. Oh, 100 already <laughs> yes. on YouTube just right now. Look at us growing. Which is amazing. So that's very cool. <laughs> Um, so yeah, we're Woo. here and I'll tell you what, we have an exciting guest, uh, in the studio with us today. Uh, we have Theron from Stone's Throw yes. Brewing out oh. of Little Rock. Um, I'm really excited to talk with him. Me too. Look at these bit. cans. Uh, <laughs> he's got crawlers and crawlers, crawlers are fantastic. Yeah. You so, know, they're, um, you know, it's a good beer. If they're yeah. canon like that. Uh, exactly. Cause exactly. everyone is made with love. I'm sure. Yeah. Cause those are yeah. labeled. Hey. So we'll go ahead and bring them on in. What up? Woohoo! Hey, there. We're happy to be here. Come on in. Leave your mark there on the fridge. Ooh, that's a good one. That's a good one. I like that. I like that size of the sticker. I like the uh, I like the logo there too. Yeah. So come on in. Oh, you want to go off the? There, there we go. There. I did that on <laughs> accident. Hey, hey! Welcome, welcome. Howdy, Hello. howdy. Man, I tell you what, you've got some really cool stuff. So we were looking through your website and uh, we were looking through some different things, and I know Stalking this is going to be a you. fun episode. <laughs> so. Yeah. But so. uh, now I will say you get the uh, distinct privilege of wrapping up season one of Beyond the Tap with us. So this is our season finale episode. Yeah. Well, I hope I don't get you pulled. That's okay. <laughs> no, no. We, we, we should have probably already been pulled, but we're still here. Yeah. If we haven't been pulled by now, uh, I think we'll be all right. So oh, but we're looking good. at you, Bradley. No. <laughs> <laughs> But no, man, welcome to the show. Thanks for making the drive. I know you're in from Little Rock, yeah, right? Yeah, so. it's a pretty easy drive up here now. Yeah, I was going to say, with the with the wider highways and everything else, and, and hopefully the uh, state police taking a nap on the side of the road, then uh, <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm easier. always hoping. I'm like, please be asleep. Yeah, can you just do that? Please be looking at your phone. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, tell tell the folks at home, uh, who who are you, man? Well, I'm, I'm Theron Cash. I'm one of the, the founders and a brewer at Stone's Throw down in Little Rock. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Now, you said one of. One I've of, heard yeah. there are four. Yeah, right? there, there's four of us. Right okay. Now, yeah. Oh, wow. That's so, awesome. uh, who are the others? Uh, Ian Beard, Sean Tobin, and Brad McLaurin. Okay. Okay. Very cool. So, yeah. how did you guys meet? Uh, we were all homebrewers at one time. Okay. And uh, there's a large homebrew club in, in Little Rock, Central Arkansas area called the Central Arkansas Fermenters. Okay. Oh, and that's we were, cool. And we were all, I mean, this is 10, 15 years ago. Yeah. We're, we're, all, we're all just members. This is how we met. You know, we're making beer, you know, we're winning, competi- we're winning our competitions. We're, you know, we're, we're, you know, we're making good beer and mm-hmm. I, as all homebrewers are like, I wonder if I could make money off of this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, and we're, we're all having this, this thought in our head. What if I had to stop paying other people to drink my beer yeah. and have yeah. other people yeah. pay me? Exactly. That's, yeah. And so, you know, we all, we're all kind of having this idea in our head and, you know, we're like, eh, I don't know. Then, you know, we start kind of talking amongst ourselves, like, you know, I bet, I bet if we bet, got together, we could do something. Yeah. And then it wasn't like, nah, it wasn't, it's not going to work. You know, we didn't capital and, and yeah. time and yeah. all this. And then, you know, a year or two later, you know, you know, I bet we could, you know, things are changing. I bet we could, <laughs> I bet we can make this work. You know, yep. we could try this, you know, nah, nah. It's not. And then finally we we're just like, we got to, we got to either do this or just shut up. Yeah. So, <laughs> so then we, we started having like serious meetings and serious planning and figured out that we could do something real small scale uh, and it could be a feasible model for yeah. for it to, to work out. No, that's awesome. Because at the time, the only the only craft beer in Little Rock was Vino's. Okay, and they oh. they've been around for 
30 years now. Okay. Yeah. Uh, We're okay. trying to get them on the show right now, yeah. so they haven't returned my email yet. Yeah. Uh, it may have gone to junk folder too, though, yeah, so it, I have no it, idea. Yeah, and uh, and then Diamond Bear, who opened in 2000. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and that, other than that, since 2000, when we opened, that... Or, that's, yeah, I got Lost Forty down there. We do, we do. So yeah, I know they them. they opened uh, just uh, just over a year after we did. That Wait, what so year crazy. did y'all open up? We we opened to the public in 2013. Okay, oh, awesome. And before okay, that, cool. I mean, we were the first ones to open since Diamond Bear. Okay, in 2000. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, geez. And then we kind of opened the floodgate there for everybody else, and we got up to a high in Little Rock of uh, ten breweries. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, yeah. I'll tell you what, before we go any further, let's go ahead and crack open yeah, one of these right. uh, beautiful cans in front of us. What do we have today? Uh, we'll start We'll start light here. Uh, this is our Kolsch. Okay. The Caddo Kolsch. Love that's a good cool. Kolsch. Named after the, uh, the the Caddo River. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. This is a good river beer. I think, yeah, Kolsch definitely. And yeah. If you like a good Kolsch, I like, to, I like to think this one's good. That's some good color there, man. I, yeah. I don't make this one a lot. Okay. Just because it takes a while to do yeah. it properly. Okay, is it a little, little more of a longer time beer? Yeah, it, it, Ooh, yeah, it, take, it takes quite a while. Okay. You know, it's more on the, on the lager, ah. lager time frame to... Uh, That's really good. I love this. But when I do make it, uh, I, I think it's pretty good. Well, yeah, well, oh, can you tell us about... Oh, thank, yes, thank you. Top me off. I love... We're already close. Thank you. All right. Tell us about the name. How did y'all come up with the name? Um... Down uh, around us, a uh, little southwest of us in Clark County, there's the Caddo River. Mm-hmm. It's a okay. it's a big outdoor kind of floating kayaking sort of get get on your inner tube and drink beer all day river. Yeah, yeah. and uh, we also like alliteration, so Caddo Colch kind of rolls like off that. the tongue. Definitely. Alliteration we, is a good thing. We, we try as much as we can. We try to to name our beers to something local, something that people yeah. have experience with. Yeah. Well, and absolutely, it kind of kind of adds to that local flair. It yeah. makes it a little more embraceable by yeah. the so by the yeah. something to be proud of. Exactly, yeah. definitely. What about Stone's Throat? How did y'all come up with that? Well, there's n- <laughs> nothing really glamorous about how we came up with that name. All right, uh, all right. Early on in our when we decided we were, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Got that drum. Okay, sorry. But, <laughs> you know, we just we decided we were going to do the brewery, and we had everything going along, and like, well, we need if we're going to do this, we need a name. Yeah. So we're sitting around, we're drinking some homebrew, just trying to come up with a name. How yeah. about whatever? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> How yeah. about whatever? Yeah. Google. Exactly. Yeah. <sighs> uh. And finally, Stone Throw came up, and mm-hmm. well, I'll be. Yeah. I think it's available. Work. Let's do it. We got a name. So, how many that. beers deep were you at that point? Uh, no telling. <laughs> okay. Right. It's just, this has been about uh, seven, eight years ago, and yeah. a, okay. a whole bunch of beers, so I don't, I don't no that could, doubt. That could be a great right. drinking game. Like, anytime you want to name anything, it's like every time the name or domain is taken, yep. drink it, take just a move sip. On. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Chug a beer. Yeah. <laughs> and, so we, and so, we took the Stone's Throw name, and we kind of related it to our operation is kind of a stone's throw from home brewing. Okay. Because oh. we're, we're only on a three-barrel system. Oh, so, wow. So by brewery standards, we're not big yeah, at all. Yeah, no, that's, that's and, small because I know Got a Hold, we just had them on an episode, and they were saying a seven-barrel. Seven so, <laughs> yeah, so three barrels. Yeah. How much yeah. How much is that produced then? Uh, I mean, for... How many school buses is that? <laughs> how many blue <laughs> whales? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> every, every run, I get... Uh, Right about 100 gallons. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, awesome. That's cool. We, we've got a bunch of three-barrel fermenters, and also we've got a bunch of six barrels. So okay. I can, okay. I, you know, I can double up. Yeah, do y'all, nice. do y'all like keeping your product? Like, is that a favorable size for y'all, or do y'all plan on trying to expand? Um, we we do very... S- very <laughs> no, it's, we do very slow expansion. Okay, We're yeah, not... That's cool. We Our business model has never been... Uh, go big or go home, and yeah. just try to get to everywhere we can, get as big and as as nasty as we can real we we go as we can okay we, okay you know we focus on the product keeping the product simple yeah. keeping the product good the whole yeah. time through and as we can expand a new account or expand our equipment or yeah. open a second tap room that's that's what we do Ooh, okay yeah. all right so now yeah how many locations do you have right now uh as of right as of a year ago we've got two locations now okay oh nice yeah now i i heard you did a kickstarter we did or now was that for your second one? Or? That was for our original location. Okay, the original location. The, the original location of uh, Stone's Throw, yeah. So how, uh, because I'm going to go ahead and act like I haven't <laughs> researched you, uh, how did that go? Uh, 
how, how did that turn out for you? Was it some, first of all, what did you go into it expecting to happen? Cause you had a, yeah. a goal. What was your initial goal? Our initial goal was 10,000. Okay. And uh, cause we, we had gotten on our own money on our, on our own back pockets. We'd gotten everything done except for the tasting room space. Okay. So we were ready to make beer. We were ready to keg it and sell it, but mm-hmm. nobody could come in to sit and drink it. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, one of the partners, Ian was, he was more keen on these, uh, social crowdfunding sorts of things. Yeah. And the, the other three of us were like, uh, not, not real sure how this works. Mm-hmm. Cause back then, this was in 2012. Yeah. So it was really it was, not popular. It was really yeah. when Kickstarter was kind of coming up. Yeah. And the GoFundMes and, you know, those, uh, Kiva was also getting okay. a start then. So we decided to go with Kickstarter just because of, we liked how it, it worked. Yeah. And so we, we thought we needed about 10000 to outfit the tap room, get ready, and, and get our doors open. Okay. So we, we launched that out, and I was I was very skeptical. Yeah. I was like, you know, this is new. Are people really just going to blindly give us money to open a business? And so we can sell them more money. Yeah. Or, you know, yeah, sell, so we can, take more of their money. Yeah, exactly. So, so but it turns out Central Arkansas was hungry for craft beer. Yeah. And uh, we hit our 10000 in like a day and a half. Wow. Really? Yeah. Holy yeah, smokes. it was it was incredible beyond yeah. beyond my wildest beliefs that it could yeah. happen, and so they give you your stretch goals and and whatnot, mm-hmm. and so uh, I think it ran for about three weeks, and at the end of the three weeks we had just over twenty two thousand. Yeah, oh, man. it is unbelievable. Yeah, that it is was so cool. It was it was completely. I, I'm I'm I still don't know where all that support came from. I tell so you, it was man, just completely amazing. People's amazing. support for local is huge, and yeah. especially here in Arkansas, I know. Uh, you know, the the more breweries and wineries we talk to, it, it's all about that community feel yeah. of like, hey, you give and take, you, you're yeah. all part of a, a greater thing. And the economic impact and the impact on your tourism, too. I mean, yeah, yeah like you're yeah. really, you're giving, you're giving in. So, yeah, I think it's awesome. Yeah, that's so cool. So, so that. you guys went through Kickstarter, you we got did. going. And then, so once you did your Kickstarter, how long did it take you guys to get the, the, the initial location up and rolling. Uh, it wasn't. It wasn't actually that long. Okay. Because we had started in. Let's see. We incorporated in August of 2012. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. No, you're fine. Then uh, took us a few months to find a suitable location because for whatever reason at the time, people just didn't want to lease out commercial space. Yeah. Is I don't know. Yeah. Do you think it was had anything to do? I mean, I know tw- you know 12 was whenever the I know the com- the residential uh, market was definitely starting to flip around a little bit uh, because from the 2008 burst. Yeah. So it, it, it could have been. I we still haven't really figured out why okay. no one would return calls. Yeah, but they they didn't. Then we stumbled upon the building we're in now at uh, on Ninth Street. Okay, and it had been. It's a very storied building. Okay, it's a. Uh, that might be a story for later. Okay. But, right. but we can hit that second half. Because there's, there's some, there's some hist- definite history in that building. Okay. But we found it. It's in pretty sad shape. It's unoccupied. The landlord, a uh, sweet old lady, she just wanted somebody to rent it. Yeah. And it was the, the price was perfect. Yep. And she, we we're like, okay, we're going to do this and this. Got the place. Bought. She's like, I don't care. Just pay your rent on time and <laughs> yeah. give me... Be, be sure the rent, rent's due on in the first. Those and are my favorite you landlords. Guys just yeah. have Shout fun. out to you, lady. You just have 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 fun. Yeah. So, well, I guess we're gonna take this one. Cool. We're putting in a water slide. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, it it took us it took us a few months. We did, being that we were self funding this. Yeah. And on a shoestring budget, mm-hmm. uh, and so we did all of the work we could ourselves. Yeah. So you know, renting concrete saws from Home Depot and cutting. Cutting slab, you know, we're hanging drywall, we're painting, we're doing all this, you know, pretty much. If it wasn't plumbing or electrical, we did it. Yeah. So I think that so, gives some of the best the best projects and yeah. some of the best, you know, results and, as well. It also saves a lot of money because a plumber's going to charge you $100 an hour to run a concrete saw. Yeah. And it ain't hard. No. So if you can prepare that ahead of time for yeah. them, then yeah. it makes so your brewery a lot happier. Yeah. So we were able to cut a lot of costs that way. Also took a little bit longer than probably hiring somebody. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. That got us to about March, April of 2013. Okay. And then when that's when we decided we were out of money. We needed the Kickstarter. Okay. So uh, that ended in when did that end? June, I believe. Okay. June of 2013. So we got our money. We were able to finish out our tap room. 
Um, and then we open to the public on August 1st. Okay. Awesome. All right. Man, that is, that's, that's a pretty quick, I would think a pretty quick turnaround there. So Yeah, like I said, we had just almost everything ready to go once yeah. the Kickstarter got, we got the money from that. So it was, you know, just, just a little bit of finishing out, building the bar, getting yeah. the furniture, getting the final paint up and stuff. So it, that's awesome. Yeah. So you still have this space, this one in tap rooms? Yeah, it's uh, our original yeah. at uh, 402 East 9th in downtown Little Rock. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. It's, uh, it's where we make all the beer. It's our original tap room. Sweet. Where's your second one? It's in a uh, kind of middle, midtown Little Rock. It's okay. on uh, West Markham. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I know that area. My, my wife's from down there, so. Yeah, cool. if, if you know where the Oyster Bar is, uh-huh. it's... The oyster bars on one in the building. We've got the space at the opposite end. Oh, okay, that's awesome. Yeah, it's a real, real great location. Yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of great, this is this great beer. This beer is great. Yeah. Uh, this is th- this would easily go with the pool with me. I'm just saying. So this yeah, is a Kolsch, the Caddo Kolsch. Yeah. Um, it is. I mean, hold my beer down. All right, I'll do that. I'm just going to read out loud. So no, uh, but yeah, basically, um, like the Kolsch is really, really delicious. Uh, who came? Was this one of your beers, or was this somebody else's beer? Like, did you guys collaborate yeah. on this at one? Th- at this point, that was it. Was after I'd taken over full time brewing. Okay, so it, it this is one of my recipes. That's awesome, man. Well done. Yeah. Well yeah. done. This and, is and uh, we just uh, and one of my partners has been Sean has been bugging me since we made the Kolsch. Okay. a few years ago the, for the first time. You should make a coffee Kolsch. Okay. And Ooh, yeah. I finally gave in, and we've got a coffee. We've got the coffee version of this on tap right now as well. Okay. Ooh. All right. That sounds good. Very, very cool. So we'll have yeah. to swing by the uh, tap room and get. Them. I mean, yeah. I'm assuming is that is that not one of these, right? It's not. No. Okay. Oh, okay. We'll have to come down and see you guys then, because yeah. I know uh, we're yeah. trying to coming up before too much longer. We're hoping to hit the road a little bit, and so yeah. we'll swing down fun. there and see you guys. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what was the first? I love asking this of brewers. What was the first beer you ever brewed? And was it in your garage? Where was it? Uh, <laughs> you mean overall your own yeah, yeah. You the personally. first one you yeah the did. first one and, i ever yeah. first one i ever did was a just a regular pale ale okay, okay. how'd, how'd it, it turn out yeah. it actually turned out really well good okay. yeah it turned and i was like very pleasantly surprised yeah by, by how it turned out that was one of the first beers like man making beer is good yeah and then my second batch was pretty much the polar opposite of okay that. <laughs> <laughs> i was like okay well maybe yeah. i need to read a little bit more oh very nice. Yeah, no, I uh, we we did our homebrew. I did my homebrew, <laughs> yeah, and now yeah, yeah. we're getting ready to get hers going. <laughs> mine turned out it was a, it was a stout, so it turned yeah. out all right. And uh, yeah, mine is hers the is, milkshake IPA. Yeah, so you're gonna have fun with that one. That, did I choose the more difficult one? If you were gonna go, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That, that's yeah. me. But, that's different yeah. than yeah. me. I feel like I feel like you're gonna have help with it. Yeah. Oh no, he's I'll not just gonna, sit here and ridicule her from the side. He's well, gonna sit there with your coal drink, okay. and he's gonna be yeah. like. All right, you Bongo, know, you got this. Yep. Help, help is a relative term. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, you know, me, I was just on my own learning yeah. this out of a book. Yeah, that's good. You, you know, this is kind of before YouTube was even a thing. Okay. You know, so I couldn't just look up how to do it. it yeah. Was, yeah. It was more of a, okay, yeah. what's Charlie saying in this book on how to brew? <laughs> and then, so, you know, it's, so I, I went with something a little safer, like, yeah. a, like a pale ale. Yeah. Um, if you, if you got a little safer, safer. y'all, I'm screwed. If you have, <laughs> that's what he's really saying. If you have someone or a YouTube now, I do. I have I, a YouTube. Yeah, th- yeah. Then I can. It, it could be more. E- it could be more easily pulled Learned. off now. Or now we got the Google. Did you use so. YouTube on your brew? I what can neither d- confirm oh. nor deny that. Um, oh. No, I actually didn't. I didn't. I didn't use that. Uh, I had watched a couple of videos oh. um, of some folks that were, you know giving some pointers but otherwise pointers. no i just followed the uh i just followed yeah. the basic instructions that were yeah. not included in the box but you had to go online to get them yeah what's the branding or what's the box brand uh, brooklyn, Austin? Brewing. brooklyn brooklyn brewing, brewing. Yeah. yeah all right so brooklyn brew company they uh they do these little kits <laughs> okay so yeah. here we go but uh <laughs> i've been procrastinating that because i'm scared <laughs> but it'll be fun so uh, uh, yeah. not to rush you guys by any yeah. means, but just Ooh, cue us up beer. on what the next beer that we will be having uh, is going to be. Um, what's, what, what, do what, what do you want? Here. Where do you want to head? We'll just we'll go to the next one. It's not really a beer. Okay. Not what really a beer. It? It's, it's actually not a beer at all. So is it a stone is throw it? from beer? It's <laughs> a little, little bit. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, right. It's uh, it's actually a cider. Really? Okay. Yeah. We, we are, as far as I know, we're the only brewery. The beer only beer brewery in yeah. Arkansas that has a year-round lineup of ciders. Really? Yeah. Okay. 
I know. Right. Yeah, because other pretty... than Black Apple, you know, yeah, yeah. they they do a fantastic job just yeah, being a cidery. Yeah. But as far as any, and I I could be wrong because I don't. I'm not intimately familiar with all 85 breweries. Hey, if you're watching right now. Yeah, tell and, me if uh, I'm wrong, please. <laughs> Go for it. You tell Theron. <laughs> if you are a brewery and you have uh, cider, uh, or if you are a lush like us and you go to breweries and they have a cider of their own, uh, feel free to comment and let us know yeah. because we'd love to have them on the show. I know there's a number of breweries that have done them at, from time to time, Okay, but we keep two of them on year round routinely we've okay got, we've got a year round uh, a pear guava cider okay that we keep on year round guava. Yeah, yeah wait when did you start that did you start that right out the gate or no it wasn't right bit? It, it was a little bit down the road uh okay. probably in our second maybe third year of of going uh at the time cider wasn't specifically allowed in the brewing permit oh, yeah. oh, okay so we had to work with the abc and actually get a small farm wine permit yeah so that we could we could produce cider. Wow! So now, so now, small farm wine so, permit. Yeah. What is it? Farm wine. I gotta <laughs> find out. Yeah. That's just I, I don't. That bathtub that's just, wine. That's just what it's called. I don't, I don't know. Okay. I don't know how they came up with the name we're of it. Have to look that but, up. But yeah. we had we had to get one. So at one time we were a brewery and a winery. Wow. Farm winery. All and right. then and then subsequent legislative sessions later, the uh, cider was just incorporated into the small brewery permit. So we okay. we didn't need us. A second permit anymore? Wow! Okay, neat. okay. neato. Well, I'll tell you that? what. Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's crack it open whenever yeah. here. And uh, Bongo, you're you're slower than me this time. You know, what? usually you're the quick one. <clears throat> you know what? I'm gonna let y'all into my personal life. I took a Benadryl last night, and I swear that thing is still in my system. Ah, so I'm a little, a little, little woozy. I'm a little groggy. <laughs> yeah. All right. But thank you, Benadryl. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Okay, you want me to check this? If you, if you want some more enjoyable content, Benadryl, you can go ahead and sponsor us, and <laughs> Bongo will take one before oh every episode I moving forward. would be, at the end of that episode, I would be asleep on this day. I would literally be like... We'll just sit here and chat over her <laughs> napping. That's yeah, it. yeah, that's fine. I can sleep anywhere. That's a gift. So. Oh, very cool. So, okay, so now... You know, one of the things you mentioned just then was uh, back when this started, you know, and yeah. so it was like... You've seen, I think, especially here in Northwest Arkansas, we've seen a lot of growth in the uh, the beverage industry. Right. Uh, but I mean, tell me, how was the scene in Little Rock um, as you guys were getting going? You, you, you know, you're one of the OGs down there. Um, you guys have have seen a lot of transition, and you've worked with the ABC. You said yep. uh, to transition out of you know small farm winery into incorporating cider into a brewery. Um, what's some of the coolest things that you guys have seen over the years in the, the progression of, I would say, ABC or the brewery, brewing industry uh, around there? Uh, just as far as in Little Rock, and I, and I feel this around the state as well, I just don't make it around as much as I'd like. Okay. But in, in Little Rock, for sure, it's, it's a very tight-knit community. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's really great. Yeah. Because we've all got, we've all got each, each other's best interest in mind, whether we, whether, you know, whether we like consciously doing that or not. Yeah. Like none of us are out to get each other is, yeah. is the big thing. And you can't say that, you can't say that for a lot of, uh, a lot of, in- a yeah. lot of industries. There's competition, yeah. but in yeah. your area, it's, it's friendly competition Yeah, yeah. because you're all cheering for each other to win. And that's what we continue to see yeah. in this is that, that everybody's cheering for everybody to win. They just really want to continue to sell a, a lot more beers. Yeah. So. Yeah, and we, and we work with we work with the other breweries in town all the time, whether it's you know borrowing ingredients or whatever, or doing collaborations. Or, yeah. Or whatever. So yeah. So have you done some good collaborations with uh, anybody? We, or? we do collaborations with everybody all the time. Awesome. I'm actually uh, on the way up here. I was talking to Tim over at Flyway. We're we're bringing out our annual collaboration. Okay. I mean, everybody's familiar with uh, Fly Flyway's Blue Wing. Yep. The great blueberry ale. I just have the uh, the early bird in my fridge right yeah, now. Yeah, that's that's one of my go tos. Really? Yeah. 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 Uh, I've been known to to, to drink a, a enjoy lot of a few those. of those. Yeah. 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 <laughs> enjoy quite a few of those. Imbibe. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but so they've had their blue wing. It's got a great following. Yeah. Uh, a few years ago, I did a peach saison. Okay. Ooh. And it just happened to be on the on at the same account, mm-hmm. the same restaurant. And they were right next to each other, and a cust- random customer was like, hey, you think I could get just a half a blue wing and a half a peach? Just mix them together. Oh, damn. And they were like, peach. okay. Right. 
And then so the next time I went in on a, a delivery, yeah, the the manager was like, "Hey, come up here. I gotta I gotta let you try something." <laughs> okay, and that's that's how this collaboration was born. Really? So that, what's that one cool. called? It's called Mighty Wing. Mighty Wing. <laughs> yeah, I've got to try that then. Yeah, it, so. it uh, it'll be coming out at our tap rooms on Friday. Well, now, and I will say, I know, you know, one of the things you mentioned off camera was that you guys are only, you know, if, if we want to have your beer, we have to come down there. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. You may want to talk to Seth over here at Growler and see if, you know, you guys can get on tap there because they got a hundred beers on tap. Yeah. yeah. So if we it's get like, like a, a lure, way. it's like, just let people taste it. And if they really want it, they yeah. got to travel. You got to go to Little Rock to I mean, get more of it. It's not a bad, it's a two and a half hour drive ish, yeah. depending on where you're going. Yeah. That's not bad. Not horrible. Yeah. Especially not for great beer. Yeah, and, and this great. cider's good. What, what are you thinking of this one? I can't drink it yet. You haven't? <laughs> Hold on. Oh, yeah, you're right. Wait. You're still on your uh, coal. <laughs> Hold on. Yeah, so this is our, uh, this just came out Friday. Okay. It's, it's our uh, summer seasonal. It's, uh, it's called. <laughs> <laughs> Load her up. Let's it's do it. Called, it's called Pineapple Squared. <laughs> pineapple Squared. Okay. <laughs> All right. Because it's, it's a pineapple apple cider. Pineapple. Pen, pineapple, apple <laughs> pen. Yeah. Here is we go. P A P P. I am excited. And about it's this. Uh, you know, it's just a, an apple base with a uh, pineapple puree. Yeah. And Ooh, we, apple base, yum. And with our with our ciders, they're not. You, you can notice they're not like a typical American cider that's just like sweet sugar water. Yeah. And I draw them out a whole lot more, so they're you can actually drink more yeah. than one of them and not feel bad. Yeah. No, uh, Bongo. What's I'll get your initial thoughts on this I, one. <laughs> The dark side of me wants to add vodka to it. I know, like right? it's one of the. That's so, that's it's fun. It's easy. Yeah, like like a fun summer drink. No, this is, this <laughs> is one that uh, <laughs> that one of our one of our managers likes to add coconut rum to. Yes. It. Oh my gosh, I was about to say that next. Really, this that, is yeah, so amazingly pineapple. Yeah. Without it being tart. I was gonna say which yeah. Some people don't like tart. I love tart, but yeah. I love this too. It's got that little bit of a bite to it, yeah. like that. Yeah. Just the, like yeah. you're saying, tart. Yeah. Like I think, yeah. just a touch. Yeah, but it's, it's like not, a, it's it's it's, it's not funny. bitter. I always talk about this, but it's like sometimes you wish things tasted the way they smelled, yeah. right? Um, and sometimes with beers they don't, but this does, and yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, I would drink. I would drink a lot of this. I think uh, I think we might manners. need to go get some of this. Uh, let's make a little road trip down to Little Rock. I'm down. Pick some of this up. Throw Callie, some, uh, we're going to stay with you. Yep. All right. <laughs> That's my, my father-in-law. I'm just going to get him to come. You know, be like, hey, yeah. we're going to crash at your place, too. Yeah. So. yeah. This is a shout out to our friends. Love you, Martin. Yeah. No, I do like Little Rock. Little Rock is so fun. Um, so this is awesome. And it's cool that you have two tap rooms. Maybe you should have one in Northwest Arkansas. I don't know. Yeah, we're, 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 we're doing good. It? We're doing good <laughs> working with what we got right, right now. Right. Okay. Well, we can always do another Kickstart. <sighs> you know what I'm saying? So, so tell us, how do you, um, let me see, how do you, how do you come up with your, uh, your, your, your lineup? I mean, you mentioned there's a couple of different, uh, you know, ciders that you have on, yeah. it, you just kind of, do you have that one standard you said? Wait, uh, we do the, the, guava. the pear guava. It, it actually started out, we were just going to have one seasonal cider, Okay, you know, run for three or four months and, you know, yeah. go to the next one. Then it's like one of those things you, you we quit making the guava. Yeah. And then everybody's like, why'd you quit making the guava? <laughs> yeah. So you, you pissed off the locals. Yeah. So, we yeah. figured out yeah. real quick that one needed to be year round. Okay. So we made that year round and then we're like, okay, well, we got to come up with new seasonals now. Okay. So yeah, it was pretty much just getting on the, the fruit suppliers website. I'm like, I wonder what would taste good. Yeah. Oh, so cool. pineapple, pineapple was an instant winner. Mm-hmm. The the one for the fall is a uh, cran apple. Okay. And that, Ooh. that one is just insanely popular we're gonna have to get some of that we bring it out uh we bring it out beginning of october okay. to run through thanksgiving and christmas okay because you know it, it blends yeah. well, with, well with your turkey dinner it pairs well with fall yeah so you know it, it, it's been really popular it pairs well with sweaters yes <laughs> sweater weather oh cider. that sounds so nice i love cran apple yeah and yeah. it's and it, it yeah. does and since it is a, a drier cider mm-hmm. it does bring out a lot of the tartness from the cranberry oh, yeah so it yeah. tastes yeah. it tastes like cran apple juice really okay just, yes. just with some alcohol in it so i'm ready for it sweet <laughs> and then uh for for spring we do uh what's called plum crazy okay it's a plum cider all right oh i've never had a plum anything beer wise yeah yeah exciting and then who who came up with that idea was that you that was me yeah. okay yeah, yeah. I, See. I, then, I figured it was you but I'm yeah, like, i had a feeling i was just gonna be like i guess that <laughs> i guess no that's the win i, I misspoke that's the win that's the winter winter season <laughs> he's like what are you doing the hand's like Sorry. stop <laughs> um, and but that's then, your winter season yeah winter season yeah. that's and so then, cool and then spring uh it's kind of been that's where the guava was mm-hmm. so we've been kind of bouncing around trying to figure out who's going to be the winner yeah and i think we found it this year okay yeah, yeah. Lulo. Lulo. Yes. All right. The name? The, the name is What is a Lulo? 
Yeah, I'm because gonna I say can, what is a Lulu? Because I can see both both of the both of the I, gears turning. In, I'm trying in to your figure head, it out. Like I think it's a small blue creature. <laughs> it's a mythical okay. Narnia. It is, Tell us. it is the weirdest little thing you've ever seen. Okay, it's a. Uh, I'm gonna like, Google this right now. Yeah, it's a it's a uh, the the Spanish name is Naranjilla. Oh, so it's what? a it's a it's a orange. It's relative it's orange to an orange. colored. Hold on. It's a, oh. Wait, it, say that again. You say. It Not looks like a nectarine no. and a kiwi had a baby. And, oh, ooh, I yeah. love kiwis. Yeah, it so so it comes from yeah. the Andes Mountains, and oh. it's it you know it's it's you know maybe maybe so big or so oh, like like tiny. a small orange. It oh. looks like an orange on the outside, but once you cut it open, okay, it looks like a uh, unripe tomato. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it really does. It really but does. It tastes like oh, is like it? orange oh, and kiwi. That's so cool. Wait, how did? you... <laughs> It's like, where is this thing? I've yeah. never seen that sold in stores. Yeah, it, I don't. It, one of our fruit yeah. suppliers. It just they've got a lot of, uh, a lot of exotic, tropical, yeah, yeah. tropical exotic like South American fruits. Oh, yeah. that's and I was exciting. Like, and I was like, what the hell is a lulo? Let's try it. <laughs> yeah, why not? And that's <laughs> that's the name of the beer. Is what the hell is a lulo? Yeah. yeah. And so it, I, I mean, that. it comes. Yeah. And uh, I'll be honest, when I got it, oh wow, it was uh, the puree is l- very less than appealing. Yeah. It, really? It was yeah. I was I was putting it in it putting it in good. the cider, and I was really having second thoughts. Like, okay. oh, I hope. This, what did I just do? I hope this color gets better. Yeah, because yeah. it was it was a very very gross greenish <laughs> poopish baby yeah. <laughs> baby food. Yeah. All right. It I was, like that you're honest though. You it know? was it yeah. was. I mean, I was. Yeah. Uh, oh, you were man. just like, nah. So how the final? Co- well, oh, you know what? Actually, save that one. Let's uh, yeah. let's go ahead and cut to break really quick, okay. and uh, we're, we're going to talk gonna more about the Lulu as we come back in. Yeah, we're going to plan our uh, visit on break. <laughs> right now, we have a word from our sponsors. So stick around Woo! here on our season finale episode of Beyond the tap, the tap with Stone Throw Brewing at Little Rock. We'll be right back. All right, so if you like what you're hearing here on Beyond the Tap, make sure and head over to YouTube and uh, subscribe to us. Hit that little bell so you make sure and get the notifications every single time that we post a new uh, episode here. It's really nice, right? What are you doing back here? And also, make sure and check us out on Apple iTunes podcast section. Uh, subscribe to us there. And uh, do you know we're also on Spotify? Yes. There's nothing in there yet, but uh, that's okay. So... Check us out. If you really, really like what you're hearing here, then you want to head over to Patreon.com, and you can actually contribute to the show and making this the awesome success that it clearly already is. And uh, throw a few bucks at us. You can earn some cool perks along the way. Visit Patreon.com slash Beyond the Tap today to check out more. And to some of my friends who, you know, bucks may not come so quickly to you, feel free to subscribe to us. That's important to us as well. Or review us. Give us five stars. You think we're five stars? I think we're five stars. I think so. And that's just as important. So follow us. Stay tuned. There's a lot coming your way. True story. See you next time on Beyond the the Tap. All right. So Lulo. That was, yes. that was pretty cool. Yeah. I like that. So so it's like the the little orange, but it has what you said like a tomato. It looks like in the middle of it. Really yeah, does. it's kind of cool. Yeah, it's it's really weird. So for those of you who are just joining us, you're gonna have to get on the Google machines or ask Jeeves. You could do that. He's a good butler. He uh, may still be around. I don't know. Or who who do we think replaced him? Uh, maybe Alexa or Alexa. Siri. Yeah, I feel like Every Alexa time. would know. But ask her what a Lulo is, and I guarantee <laughs> she'll say uh, a Lulo is what Stone's Throw uses for making their bomb beer. Delicious uh, beer. It's going to be amazing. So check that out. But uh, with us in the studio today, we have Theron from Stone's Throw Woo-hoo! Brewing out of Little Rock. Everybody welcome him back. Woohoo! Hello. Hello. So, yeah. Welcome back. Man, this has been great. You guys have delicious beers. Um, yeah. I know that we've had one of your beers, one of your ciders so far. And I, I have zero complaints. Uh, that that pineapple is really good. That's what we're going for. Hey, yeah, that's that good, man. So good. So now, so now, what is the? I've got to ask because I know that uh, what's what's the worst beer probably that you've ever made, <laughs> uh, or the hardest, or it just didn't turn I will, out right. I will, I will own this one. Yeah, no, that's well. The the worst beer I've personally ever made. Okay, I'll, I'll tell you my professional one here in a minute. Uh, <laughs> Early on, you know, I thought beer making was easy. Yeah. So I kind of went. You shot little, it out of the gate, man. Yeah. yeah. And so I was like, let me be experimental here. Okay. So I tried to make a peanut butter oatmeal cookie beer. Oh, yes. Really? Oh, no. It was horrible. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. That 
was the first and last time I will ever attempt that. Okay. Even though I think I could probably pull it off now. I'm just... No. What do you hey, think? You know what? Uh, I think you should pull it off now. What did it <laughs> taste <laughs> like? Uh, yeah, it was not any, like, tasted like anything you would want to put in your mouth. Nothing resembling no, an oatmeal. No, no peanut, peanut butter. butter, no okay. oatmeal, no chocolate, nothing. Nothing. It was... <laughs> Good to know. Epic fail. So what are, what are we diving into right now so this, that's not a, a total yeah, epic th- fail? This is uh, the the complete opposite. It smells delicious. It's, it's so great. It's our newest uh, year round IPA. Okay. We we always have a seasonal IPA. Yeah. But we ha- we've got a lot gotten a lot of feedback that they want more IPA choices. Okay. And we're I'm typically not a big hop brewer. Okay. You know a lot of people you know, all they do is. You know, double IPAs, milkshake IPAs, East Coast IPAs, Northeast IPAs. Yeah. That, that. And we don't really gravitate towards that. Yeah, that's not your forte. It's, for... it's, it's not. It's not really, not really what we're based on. Yeah. You know, we we do more traditional styles, and you know, do you know? Mm-hmm. Don't really know how to a good way to describe that. Yeah. But, yeah, we get but it. big. Yeah, we get that. But we're not. We're not trying to corner ourselves into the IPA market. You know, yeah. we, you know, like I said, we had a, a seasonal IPA, and you know, it does well for us. But we don't. It's good. But we don't make typically make a lot of them. Yeah. But we got a lot of requests for more IPA options, so we decided we should. Well, we'll just add an, a year-round IPA. Yeah. So out comes the Dirty Seven. The Dirty Ooh. Seven. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and uh, got to tell us where that come from. Of Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, yeah. So, so the Dirty Seven is just a, a back road stretch from where I grew up in uh, Sheridan. Okay. Down in Grant County. Like a Highway 7? Uh, it, no. It, oh, okay. There is not a 7 in the name. There's, okay. It's, uh, no one knows why it's called the Dirty 7. It just is. Maybe they're drinking 7, what's that, whiskey? 7 and 7? Yeah, yeah, that's what they're drinking Like a on Seagram's? It. So, but, if, <laughs> but, you know, people from Sheridan, they, they know the Dirty 7. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So all I right. just, you know, why not? Now, if you're listening and you are from that area and you know why it's called the Dirty 7 down there, then please... Leave a comment. Yeah. Let us know. I would very much like to know. Yeah. I mean, it, but it makes a great beer. I'll yeah. tell you that. So. Yeah. And so something I thought about uh, with why we started making ciders, it'll relate to this beer. Uh, you know, early on, a lot of people didn't want, specifically want like craft beer yeah. or beer in general. They wanted wine. Okay. You know, and they'd come in wanting wine. So, you know, we, we carry we carry local wines, you know, Post. Oh, and, uh, nice. Uh, have y'all had Sassafras or Tawny Town down there? We have not. All right, y'all need to get some we of them. They're the, they're the northwest northwest Arkansas folks. So. Yeah, and we uh, there's a, a new br- a new one in Little Rock, Rusty Tractor. We carry them. Rusty Tractor wine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, they do good stuff, and we, we need we, to have them on the show. We hey, I, I emailed them actually, so right. I'm I'm waiting to hear back Wait, on the confirmation. They make good stuff. Yeah, they, they yeah. got good stuff. If you, if you if you're good friends with them, yeah. reach out yeah. and be like, hey, I went up and was on the show. Totally worth your time. I know you're on the <laughs> fence a little bit, so okay. yeah. no, really, he he's kind of. I think he's debating right now on whether or not it's worth the drive up here. Okay, so, yeah, I'll, you know. I'll pull some strings. All right, all right. Yeah, but anyway, so we thought ciders would be a good. A good alternative, okay, to people who may, who maybe didn't want beer, who you know, kind of get get them away from the wine a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Start making ciders, and we also had a large number of people who wanted a gluten free option. Okay, so the ciders are just by nature gluten free. Absolutely. Yeah. So so that's how the cider program started, and then technology has evolved mm-hmm. along, and so we're like, why don't we just make a gluten free IPA? Oh, and wait. Time out. Are you telling me this is gluten free? Um, really? Technically, legally, it is <laughs> gluten reduced. Okay, all right. We can't call it gluten free for a number of reasons. So, if my mom who has celiac disease, uh, if she drank yes. one of these, it, it tests be- she'd be okay. It tests below the threshold. Uh, the threshold for wow. for being gluten being That's considered really gluten free. Awesome. Yeah. So it's it's just uh, White Labs makes a uh, makes an additive now you can put in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And a uh, to take care of the gluten, and what you have is a bona fide gluten reduced IPA. Wow. Owen Wilson, wow. Nope, that was a different one. So we don't have that one. Sorry. <laughs> Dang I'll it. Just, I'll just screw it up. Oh, there, there we go. go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. <sighs> that was on me. So. Listen, there's not, there's not a lot of awesome gluten free beers that. That's exactly what I need to say. There's really not. Yeah. There's, there's really there, not. There's, there's, there's not at all yeah. because, no. yeah. like, early on in the gluten-free beers, you had, like, what, Red Bridge? I, I was going to say that one. And it's, it's 
I'm not a fan. It's it's not my kind of beer. It's sorghum based. Yeah, pe- and I mean, I'm sure it's a great beer it? for people who like it, but it, it's it's not my thing. Yeah, it's it's sor- it's a yeah. It was definitely one of the front runners in gluten free, yeah. and it was or reduced gluten reduced or whatever yeah. they call it. But I was not a fan. Just yeah. just a little heavy okay. flavor to oh, it. Okay. So, but this right here, I mean, I'll say for an IPA. Mm-hmm. Um, so now, how long have you been brewing this one? Uh, this one came out, uh, I believe, in February. Okay, so, right, so it's a it's, relatively, it's relatively new beer. New, yeah, I'll tell you, it's delicious. I, I like the. Uh, you definitely can taste the hops. Taste that it. it's an IPA, but it's excuse me. Woo. Um, <laughs> That's it how you is. Know it's good. Uh, it is good, and I'll tell you, it's not overbearing. It's not the. Uh, that really bitter hoppy, it's yeah. it's got a good flavor. And that's mm-hmm. I prefer my IPAs to be more of the flavorful IPAs, yeah. rather than the ones that just punch you in the face with bitterness because yeah. they can. Yeah, and yeah. I'll, I'll enjoy one of those. You know, what's, every what's now I've used on this. Uh, I don't you know. know offhand, sixty ish. Okay, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, I love that. It's a single hopped with mosaic. Okay, okay. Ooh. Now, do you do any one? like uh, dry hopped? Uh, beers at no, all? This, this one is. This one is. This okay. is very heavily dry hopped. I was gonna say. Yeah. I was like, wow, that's. Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right. <laughs> no. Uh, so. Cool. So we have gone and uh, we, we've got our producers asking, "What's an IBU?" So, uh, if, would you like to explain it? Because I'm sure yeah. I will be a train wreck if I try to explain. Uh, it, it's, but. it's basically just a measure of the bitterness of yeah. your beer. Yeah. So, so the lower the number, the the lower the bitterness. Yeah. Oh, uh, like. You know, an American lager, you know, easy drinking, light beer. It's going to be, you know, 20, 20 IBUs or so. Yep. yep. You, you basically can tell on the scale because of the coloring. Like, that's part of it, too, being able to identify it like that. Is that right? Is uh, that col- wrong? Coloring is, is numbers, but it's a, a different number. Oh, okay. okay. Never right. mind. I was like, yeah. is that the same scale? IBU uh, <laughs> just says, uh, it, it's, Inter- the meaning of it is, yeah, international bittering. Yeah. Or bitterness. Bitterness unit. Yeah. So, the, so, so the, the more <laughs> it's just a bunch of people stand so, there like this. Ugh. Yeah. yeah. The, the more hops you add, the the more bitter it's going to be. Yeah. So, you know, you think of something like, I don't know, like the Kolsch, for example. Yeah. Was was Not very. It, it's about. I think it's about fifteen twenty IBU. Yeah. Just just barely enough that you can taste it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then you take. And then we've got one. It's called. Uh, I'm. Very recently, we made it a uh, new hops who dis. Okay. <laughs> a, right. New hops, who it is? So it's a, a triple IPA. Okay. Which was a hundred IBUs. Okay. And it, wow. it was one of those that punched you in the face because it could kind of taste it, and yeah. you're just like, "That's something." It, but <laughs> all right. It also has it also has a lot of nice juicy flavors to it. Okay. So juicy. once it punches you in the face, it kind of massages it away. What kind of hops <laughs> do you use in that one? Um, a bunch of them. I okay. don't remember them all. No, that's fine. Honestly, it was a bunch. Of, it was a bunch. So it's a good mix. Of, it was a, and it was a bunch of hops that I that were new to me that okay. I had, that I hadn't used before. Yeah. Like uh, I know some of them were Azaka and Sabro. Okay. And uh, can remember uh, Brew One, I think was the really name. and uh, yeah, just a bunch of like you know huh. I just found them like you know a pound here and a pound there you know it's like oh, yeah we'll make one beer now have you ever used the was it the Waiiti? Right. Ooh, yeah. Have you ever used? That I have not. U- I have not used those. So uh, our our Memory. good friends here in uh, was it New Province, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, yeah. No. Wait. No, that was wait. core. That was core. Oh, was core it? Oh, yeah, the because they had that. Yeah. So okay, right. uh, okay. check in with them. Uh, our sense. friends at Core over here in Springdale. Okay. Um, they actually tried that one out, and it was it was a different flavor. It was really good. Good but, memory. Yeah. Hey. No, the hey. the uh, Australian New Zealand hops they've typically got some really great flavors. Okay. Cool. I believe in them. Now I have to ask too because this is one of my favorite topics of all, and Bongo knows where I'm headed here. But what's uh, have you guys do you, do you use a one consistent yeast strain, or is it uh, is it kind of like do you pair up some different yeasts with different uh, different kind of brews, or what do you do? There's use a limited number of yeast strains just because it's hard to keep a hundred of them healthy at one time. Yeah, you know. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, most of my, I say most of the beers are made with just a regular British ale yeast. Okay, you know, the IPA stouts, the, those sorts of ale yeast. Um, I do have one lager yeast that I use for most of the lagers, and uh, every once in a while, and then the uh, this one we'll be trying next is a, a Belgian strain that I keep around. Okay, all right. A Belgian G string. Bel- yes. G strings. Yes. yes. G strings. Yeah. 
watch the Hawk Mouth <laughs> episode. I promise it'll make sense. Yeah, well, Bradley right. says we always... If we people, go back, and I'm yeah. sure our audience is yeah, like, they're tired really, of, this again. They're tired of it, but it's just so funny. Our friend this says... He has a little draw to him, which says, is good. He says, yee strings. But people are like, did you just say G-string? And so now he just says G-strings. That's it. <laughs> so so uh, we always ask people about their G-strings. Well, yeah, and so so what's the... What would you say is, the, is there like a, a weird... Yeast strain that you've used at all for any of your beers? Uh, yeah, at, at one time I was using a strain. Uh, it's called we call it the Dunbar strain. The Dunbar, okay. Yeah. Uh-huh. A uh, a local home brewer had harvested it from one of the community gardens in town, the Dunbar Garden. Really? He he harvested it off of a plum in the garden and grew it up. And Interesting. It, and it turned out to be a really great strain of yeast. Okay. And That's cool. and so you know it got him to grow up a a pitchable strain for us yeah. that we could use on a large scale, and, and we use that for a little bit. Okay, all right. Uh, now, were there any specific characteristics about that? that it was like, set things apart. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a wild yeast. Obviously, had a lot of uh, Belgian characteristics. Okay, so it, right. it, so it was always asking for waffles. I'm just kidding. Yeah. It, hey. just kidding. So it I so love it, their it was it's poor service. It was a, it attenuated very highly. Okay, so it, so it would make the beer just super dry. But you would also get nice fruity kind of phenolic characters from yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, and it was it was just a really really nice strain, really nice find. Like it. Yeah, That's cool. Because yeah. I, I I hear that when you're trying to do that, you you get more turds than you get good yeast strains. Okay. And he right. and he happened to just like come out of the gate with this one. Yeah. Yeah, now that's so, good. That's yeah. great that he's able to to you know harvest that and and turn it into something that was genuinely useful and yeah, it was it was um, really great strain. That's awesome. Yep. Very cool. Well, I tell you what, we got, uh, what, what's the next? You said, you said trolley tracks? Yeah, right? trolley tracks. names tra- are so great. Trolley tracks. Okay, yeah, so do you come up with most of the names? I don't. Okay, who, who comes up with these? Uh, New Hops, who it is? Whoever else wants to. Oh, okay. Honestly. Right. Can we name one? Sure. Right, we're going right. to name one. zippity doo da yow Yas. Uh, zippity doo da yas. This is the official part <laughs> of the... Uh, podcast where we have no idea what the hell that bongo is saying <laughs> no i came up with a name they said new hops who it is all right zippity bruda how about that Ooh, i like that one too thank you i like the yas part though that'll we'll be 12.95 that <laughs> <laughs> all right all right chug so now this one tell us about uh, trolley tracks yeah so the so the name comes from um back in the old days of little rock yeah um uh, both of our tap room locations were trolley stops. Okay. For the old, for the old back, you know, turn of the nineteen. The drunk wagon. Is yeah. That yeah. Essentially- you know, around you know early nineteen hundreds when there was the trolley trolley system that ran through Little Rock. Yeah. Uh, both of both of our tap rooms were right at trolley stops. Okay. So we honor that with trolley tracks. That's triple. really cool. And plus the alliteration again, as we like to do. You got to do that. A trolley tracks triple. Yeah. So. Very cool. What's the? Uh, I'm seeing nine percent. Yeah, this is a nine percent. Holy smokes! It's, it's a you know Belgian triple, and it's it's that very is a Belgian. I like. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very it's very deceiving. Nine yeah. percent. Yeah, I'll, I'll say that. Okay, does it sneak up on you. It it sneaks up very quickly. Sneaky trolleys. It's quickly and hardly. Ding ding, mofo. I right. want to play. <laughs> yeah, what's funny is you said it's a Belgian, and I was actually smelling it as you were saying that, and it, it's. Very clearly a Belgian. I like the, I love the notes of it. Um, after we've been doing this for a little while now, we're, we're now 12 episodes in. And uh, I'll tell you what, we're starting to learn some of those characteristics of the different beers uh, on a pretty consistent basis. And, and so, yeah, I think that's just great. I know that was like the worst lead out line ever. <laughs> Whatever. There's beer, guys. It's tasty. It's all I know. We're drinking it. Yeah, that's good. What do you think on that, Bongo? I'm happy. Yeah? Yeah, I like it. So so a triple, what sets a triple apart from other uh from other brews? I mean what's what does triple mean? Yeah. It's uh it, you know, it's just a stylistically it's it's a, it's a style of beer. It's gonna be a lighter, you know, obviously a lighter ale. Okay. That's gonna be high in alcohol. And it's gonna be very effervescent. Gonna yeah. be gonna be pretty you know, pretty light bodied, but so good. But the carbonation is going to make up for that. Yeah. So you'll have a you'll think it's a heavier beer, but it's not. Yeah. And it's you know just just known for being a little higher higher alcohol. Okay. You, okay. Know what, you know what goes great with a triple? 
Mm. I learned this from my favorite women at Sweet Freedom Cheese. It is a banana jam. Okay. That they sell with a fromage blanc cheese. And really? It is insane. Now, with a triple, you bring up a great question. Yeah. Have you all, you mentioned doing collaborations on beers oh, yeah. and beverages. Pairings. Have you done any pairings? Yeah. Collaborations with different local foods or anything we, like that. We used to do that quite a lot. Okay. Yeah, actually. And back, then COVID, right? Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. murdered everything there. Pretty much. All right. Uh, back, Literally. back to our uh, Kickstarter. One of the Kickstarter prizes was a beer dinner pairing. Okay. With one of the local food trucks who's now defunct. Oh. Uh, that, Man, I hate hearing that. It was well before COVID. Yeah. So yeah. okay, don't right. give it to COVID. Well, no, All right. So so the the wound, we're not chalking that up to a COVID. Yeah. The wound mm-hmm. the wound's not fresh here. Okay. But great food truck. But it was uh, it was so well received after our first one that we just kept doing it once a month. Okay. We would do a food pairing with this food truck. Yeah. Until they you know finally had to close up. Gotcha. And, and we couldn't do that. And then since then we've paired up with other. With other restaurants, nice. yeah, to to do yeah. these sorts of pairings. Well, what's one of your favorite, most memorable pairings? Like, so if someone comes to Little Rock, they're like, "I'm about to get this beer. What should I pair this with?" Like, just give us your favorite or something that like your go to. Even if you've never done a pairing, what do you do with your dinner? You know, like a salmon, whatever. Well, that, that, that is <laughs> that. That's a hard question. Oh yeah, which, which dig which, deep into your yeah, soul. I, I do have to <laughs> dig deep. Because Little Rock also has a, a very robust restaurant scene. Oh, that's true. And I don't, I don't want to step on toes. Okay, well then, we'll take it away from the restaurants. Take it to something like just like uh, a meal, like a, a cuisine or style, or you know, like w- if you're eating dinner tonight, what would well, you? Which do? I probably will. <laughs> that's, that's a good thing to do as normal people. I mean, yeah. if you eat dinner tonight, what would you pair? When with? we need people, we need the dinner. yeah, we need the to uncover the true you. Tell us. You eat a cheese pizza. Yeah. Which beer are you choosing? Oh yeah, that's a good. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh cheese. See, see that that that's yeah. more to go on right there. <laughs> yeah. So if I'm eating some pizza, uh, it's gonna be the Vienna Lager. Vienna. Okay. Yeah. All right. Or okay. Amadeus Vienna Lager. I did. Okay. I did name that one. Actually. Okay. I like yeah. that Amadeus. Wait, yeah. how, What's the story behind that one? Um. So uh, Mozart. Yeah. He's was was born. We're in, friends. He he was born in Salzburg. <laughs> yep. And uh, spent a lot of his time in Vienna. Oh, okay. That's perfect. So. Yeah. Ta-da. Works, yeah. And so, I need a piano. And so I would like a piano, producers, right here. And that's <laughs> don't have one. And that's the reason they don't let me name beers anymore because I get real nerdy. Oh with my it. gosh! So you are, have been banned from naming they, beers. They asked me to, to quit naming beers. I yes. think y'all should let him do his piece. Because <laughs> uh, at one point I was what? naming them all after mathematicians. Yeah. Because you know, oh, are you? Do you love math? Uh, yeah, I got a, I got a bachelor's in math. I okay. Say, what was your life before this? Um, airline oh, pilot. That's awesome. What? What? This yeah. is like so. Why did you just like? Why did you just fly in here and tell us that? Is yeah, there a plane really. outside? Where is it? Zach can That's take it. you up. I know That's that. Amazing. Okay, tell us more about that, please. Yeah. I'd like to know more. Yeah. How do you go from yeah. airline pilot to hey? I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, just brew beer for the rest Holy of my life. Because pilots yeah. drink a lot. I bet y'all do. <laughs> Not before flights. <laughs> hey, but that one movie hey. with Denzel. That's, that's all we have. We, <laughs> we get pee test. We get pee tested for everything else. So that's it, true. Booze is about all we got. All right. Well, that works. <laughs> that's awesome. But anyway, yeah, so no. I think yeah. you should name one of your beers the Hudson. Then yeah. oh, is that? Oh no, no, no. not no. too much. You should name one of your beers Denzel. Oh okay, <laughs> we can do that. But anyway, awesome. in the most non-linear way you could possibly have a career track yeah. yeah i went to i went to school and i got a degree in math and then i went to be an airline pilot for 10 yeah. years that's amazing because that's what yeah. you do i get with a math degree okay but yeah, yeah i was gonna say I, I don't even understand math so i'm like what do you do with that yeah, yeah. And rockets then, <laughs> and then so spacex so you're going over, to spacex yeah that's so it. overlap overlap my last uh three or four years at the airline with the beginnings of stone's throw Okay. You know, I was kind of over the airline life at that mm-hmm. point. Gotcha. Yeah. And like, I need to find something else to do. Now, really yeah. quick, what, what did it end for you? Yeah, like, what yeah, was like, you said you're over airline it. life. Like, what, 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 what just was like. You might attract the a whole pilot like, audience. Nah. Yeah, it, it's just, it wasn't for me. Okay. I'll, I'll say that. It's, That's fair. That. Well, you were, do you have a family? Because that could be like, or no. like, I feel like it's hard to be around for. No, he's like, I just hated it, really. That's it. That, that was, that was part of it yes i mean being away from your I friends mean, and family I constantly mean, I don't, to deal with people. i don't have kids yeah me neither I was, what's up i mean yeah, maybe I was, one day who yeah. knows don't, i was i was married COVID, at the, don't high five me yeah i was married at the time <laughs> but uh 
Tell us. You know, no, we're not laughing at that you were married at the time. Yeah. People have been married You, you at the should. Time. It was humorous. But anyway, <laughs> uh, so it was. It got to the point where I was, you know, I was at a hotel five nights a week. I came, okay. ho- I came home long enough to, to wash my underwear and pet the dog. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm gone again. Yeah. yeah. You know, and just. Were they even nice hotels? Decent? Middle? They were they were decent. I, it's the airport double tree. I'm I won't say. I love a double tree. I won't but complain about the airport one. Yeah, I won't complain about the hotels. They, yeah. I mean, we we had contracts, so to to oh, have us nice. in, in nicer places. We yeah. do love the double tree in Bentonville. Yeah, absolutely, they're it, great. It's just, <laughs> you know, you you, yeah. you just get tired of. I get that for, of of being gone. We got we got to the point where the first the first about year and a half we were the four of us were running stones throw in our spare times we all had our day jobs yeah and then we got to the point where we needed full-time employment and so my my hand was the first up like i i need i need a new job let's do this yeah so i that's when i went full-time as as brewer so i've got to ask um just based on current events right now uh do you serve food in your tap room to sober up bongo Normally Seth would be here. Seth, we need you. I'm just <laughs> saying. Yes, at our uh, <laughs> at our uh, brewery location at, yeah. on Ninth Street, we do have a we do have a, a food truck that has a full kitchen. Okay, Ooh, and, yeah. and then at our satellite tap room, we we'll usually bring in food trucks on the week Fridays or actually Thursday through Sunday. Okay, do y'all ever have fun. like live music or programming? We have yes. Currently, oh, because you're in a band, and you're in a band. Look at I'm that. I'm not in a band. I mean, Cur- I heard you're in a band. A yeah. one-man a-hole. Tell us about so. you. <laughs> Currently, no, because okay. COVID. Yeah, COVID is weird. But yeah. tell me about your band. My band? Yeah. Personally. Yeah, it, I found out uh, yeah. behind the scenes, the, Darren's the, in a band. The Big Damn Horns. Nice. <laughs> Do you guys have any yes. uh, music out there, like on Spotify yeah, or anything? No, we're, we're, we're purely cover band. All right, we can get to can it. Can you but, put it online? But it's, but it's, <laughs> we've, we've got some on, uh, yeah. I think it's on Bandcamp. Okay. All right. It's, uh, oh, okay, yeah. Maybe, maybe. I, I can't remember. Anyway, it's, uh, it's a bunch of guys I went, guys and girls I went to college with. It's, uh, we got a full horn band, kind of Chicago esque. Nice. Oh, that's yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Yeah, so we've got, you know, we've got six horns, full rhythm section. Hey, I played, uh, True Love. I played trombone for a year of my life. Yeah. I'm so sorry. can I join yeah. the band? No. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, yeah. so, okay. You actually mentioned something really good, really good there too. Um, so you know, you mentioned the uh, where you came from. What's the background of your other founders? I mean, are, are were they all? I mean, obviously, you said they're home brewers, yeah. and you guys got together through that. But I mean, what did their lives look like? Are they all full time with the brewery now, or do some of them still do their own full time gig elsewhere and and invest here? Yeah. So so two of the guys, uh, Brad and Sean. Okay. Uh, Brad is a recently retired, but he was an architect. Okay. And, you know, he did whatever architects What's do. What's his last name? Uh, McLaurin. McLaurin. Brad, Brad McLaurin, yeah. All right. He was, uh, and he actually was having an architect as a partner actually turns out to be a really good asset. Okay. Because you got to plan a lot of stuff. Yeah, they're yeah. great people. And the, and they, <laughs> he know he knew how to plan out all the all the floor plans and all this other stuff that we had no idea about. Yeah. Saved us a lot of money. Well, it's stuff that you would yeah. you would initially kind of just think, oh, we'll wing it, we'll find our way, but then it, it turns yeah. into like, oh, well, if we put that there, then yeah, how's a, the rest a, of this flow? A lot of that stuff. Yeah. yeah. So he was he was very helpful in that, and, you know. But he you know he he retained that until yeah. It's that's a pretty good gig from what I hear. Yeah. So he, you know, he he just recently retired from that. He's living the good life now. I've, I've got an uncle that's an architect, so he's yeah, yeah. And then uh, he enjoys it. Uh, one of the other partners that kept his full time job, is Sean Tobin. Okay. He's a investigator for the federal government. Oh, sweet, Sean. Stay away. We're going to talk to you, buddy. Yeah, I got some people I need you to look up. <clears throat> stay away. Uh, <laughs> stay away from Bongo. You can come <laughs> hang out with me. Yeah, and then at, at the time that I went full time, uh, another partner, Ian Beard. He was a uh, living historian at okay. the old State House Museum. Really, like, oh, that's a beautiful he's a, home. Yeah, he's a, yeah. he's a big history buff. He could he can tell you the history of Arkansas from the time dinosaurs roamed the earth until now. All right, the dinosaurs and, roamed Arkansas. Yeah, <laughs> they're like, where are the Tyson chicken at? Where is that at? Yeah, <laughs> Tyson Saurus. <laughs> he, is, he is he is a a fountain of historical knowledge. It's amazing. His, yeah. His, yeah. History is not really my thing, but it it's his, and he does it. Yeah, yeah, he does it well. That's way cool. So you guys come together and you you form the brewery. These beers are good, and they're also potent. So they are. I think the triple yeah. snuck up on her. It already. did. It did. Uh, uh, triples always do, though. Let's talk. Tried about to that. warn you. Yeah. 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 
<clears throat> so <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> so I'll say this. So where? Um, let me ask. Where are you guys headed to? I mean, you said you're you're kind of enjoying the two locations right now. Yeah, you guys are. Uh, uh, you're doing strong, right? How yeah. has obviously? Uh, again, I always say this because uh, while we're recording this, we're kind of coming through the COVID era right yeah. now. Uh, but how has that impacted your business? I mean, has that been something that? Uh, obviously I think everybody's shut down temporarily yeah. and then you guys have relaunched. Have you seen your customer base come back pretty, pretty well? It's start, starting to come back. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. So we never really closed yeah. the brewery completely. We kept it open for takeout. Okay. When, when, when everybody, the initial shutdown happened yeah. and we could do takeout only, we kept the brewery open for takeout. Okay. Nice. But, but the tap room wasn't really, yeah. really wasn't fully functional at that point. It was, it was just under a year old, yeah, and it wasn't really set up for that that sort of thing. Okay, so we we just cut, it. we just made the t- decision and, and closed it. Yeah, for you know three months, which okay. ups your demand. Yeah. yeah. Well, then did you guys jump on? I would assume the delivery train once that kind of started. Yeah, I being mean, as, as soon as they as soon as they let us start delivering direct to consumer. Yeah, uh, we were. I think right now we're the only one in Little Rock. That's it's delivering. Okay. Oh, no way, really? really? Yeah. All right. No, Delivery no. Uh, awesome. Actually, E6 yeah. just started. Okay. All yeah. right. But uh, formerly known as Rebel Kettle. Uh, yeah, I was going to say they switched their name. We're going to try to get them on here pretty soon. Oh, but, yeah. Uh, Don't get okay. those guys on here. Though. Oh, those guys. <laughs> I ah. heard they're too fun. <laughs> I'm yeah. Just kidding. No, no, but this has been great. That's awesome. I mean, I, I love where you guys are going. I love where you're headed here. What's uh, Is there anything that you kind of can tease for where you guys are headed as a brewery oh, yeah. or... I want that um, cran apple. That's all I've been thinking about. Know, right? <laughs> and uh, a plum first, one. Fr- first Friday in October. Okay, first cool. Friday in well, October. I'll, I'm, I am the type of person that I set reminders in my calendar. So yeah. you'll see us. We'll, we'll be have there. to do that. Yeah. We'll so, have to come down. Yeah. So the one thing that we figured out real quick yeah. during the COVID thing that we, we were left behind in is we we don't do any package beer. Okay. Other than, you know, the crowlers. Yeah. Those, those are, you know, those Perfect are. Perfect size for just hanging out by yeah. yourself. But those <laughs> are, kidding. but those are point of sale. These aren't like yeah. sit on the sh- liquor store shelf. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. you, you I never package these as you're selling yeah. them, right? I mean, yeah. So, and so we haven't done, ever done any sort of bottles, we cans. We should. we should. Yeah, we should. What's going on? And, we, <laughs> and, and we never, just never really have because. Yeah, but there's probably a demand now. Because, your people. yeah, we've, we've had demand before and we yeah. were, we were able to sell it all draft only yeah. yeah so there wasn't really any need yeah to to go that way well, do y'all do growlers also we do growlers oh, yeah. okay cool okay yeah. yeah pretty much anything you want to bring in and fill up beer we'll we'll do she's it. gonna my... bring a bucket don't tell yeah, her i'm that. like here's my <laughs> she's gonna go to firehouse subs and she's gonna like... pick out one of their pickle buckets yeah. and bring that I'm in i'm literally for you to gonna fill. bring you my uh my water bottle but please uh, uh... <laughs> i'm just kidding now jeans yeah. full of beer <laughs> but, but we've recently gotten into large format bottles yeah so okay. for our anniversary uh Anniversary of our first brew day, yeah, in on brew. July fourth. That's cute. Yeah. Brew day. Yeah, we we launched um, our first brew day was July fourth of twenty thirteen. Yeah, because oh. ABC licenses expire at the end of June. Okay, so we could have gotten it in June, but it would have expired on July first, and we would have had to get another one. Yeah. So why wouldn't have been worth the fee? Yeah. So we just waited yeah. a couple of weeks. Yeah. And uh, our so our first brew day was on July fourth when we we're all off. Nice. Okay. And so we commemorate that off every as an entrepreneur, right? Yeah, 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 we get that. We were off from our day job, yeah, from the airline pilot job. Yeah, so we, so we commemorate that every year with our anniversary stout. Okay, and uh, we launched that this year in twenty-two ounce bottles. Okay, so yeah. we did twenty-two ounce bottle of the anniversary stout plus a twenty-two ounce bottle of a barrel aged anniversary stout. Okay, and um, a and a commemorative glassware that goes with it now you mentioned barrel age yeah uh where like barrels, barrels come from yeah. rock town rock town oh, I right. love rock, yes. okay. they are rock town and their damn cheeto puffs yep <laughs> rock, <laughs> because they're she's so got good stories about yeah that. Rock, rock town is like three blocks from us okay oh, so rock it's Town's so fun so it 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 just makes sense absolutely we should rock town come see us yeah, yeah. It, a lot of things in little rock are awesome we'll just yeah. say that we're yeah. going there we're getting them well Except, that said yeah i mean we're we're definitely gonna <laughs> have you guys come in I know. Uh, we'll come visit, yeah. yeah. Because we're gonna have to. We'll have to be there in October. So, what are your uh, what are your operating hours? Uh, right now, uh, we're open uh, Tuesday through Tuesday through Friday, four to eight. Okay. Okay. And on the weekends, from two to eight. 
Okay, awesome. That's awesome. We'll have to come yeah. down and check you we guys get there out. By eight. Yeah, we get, we get in bed by ten. That's yeah, great. Yeah, See? perfect. Not together. <laughs> That'd be weird. No, yes, every hour. Um, <laughs> but uh, what's your website? In case people are listening and they want to check out more about you, um, tell them where to find you. Yeah, you can go to stonesthrowbeer dot com. All right, or uh, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Okay, very cool. We'll check them out online. Do you guys sell any merchandise online or anything like that? Uh, yeah. We don't. We don't have any merchandise online. Hey. If you if you are in Little Rock by chance and you want delivery, that's that's where our delivery website is as well. Okay. I would yeah, we're gonna talk some merch. Yeah. I think y'all could do some really cool merch. Well, thank you guys yeah. again so much for joining us here on Beyond the Tap. Uh, we've had a great time with Theron. So fun. From Stones Throw Brewing. Thanks uh, for your really. I hate having to cut this off. <laughs> I but, know. Uh, so we could keep talking. You know what? You guys enjoy the rest of this. And thanks again for EcoVet uh, for sponsoring this show, okay. as well as our great friends from Growler's Uptown Kitchen and Tap House. Whoop. And, uh, of course, Bongo for being Bongo. Hey. And uh, we will <laughs> see you guys next time here on Beyond the Tap. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Thank you.